Hey friends, I'm really excited to be spending a day with you in the middle of the week. We're doing this because this is such a special week for people who follow Jesus. And I know that when during this week, we'll hear a lot of stories about what Jesus did from the Bible. But my hope is that you won't just listen to the stories, but you'll put yourself in the story. Because here's the cool thing. What happened 2,000 some years ago that is written about in the Bible matters just as much to your life today. But to start us off, I thought we would play a super fun Easter game. We're going to play a bunny race. So here's what you have to do. Pick a bunny and cheer him on as he travels around the world and maybe even outside of this world. Let's see if your bunny can win. Cool! Did your bunny win? That's a pretty fun and silly game. But watching those bunnies fly all over the world makes me realize that even though we're talking a lot about what Jesus did a long time ago, it matters just as much today exactly where you are no matter where that is. In fact, that gives me a great idea. Why don't we all say hi to each other and find out where we all are? So if you can go to the comments, write your name and tell us the city you're in. middle of the week SPP Kids Online is going to look a little bit different than the celebrations we have on Sundays. It's going to be a little bit quieter and it's going to be a little bit shorter. Like I said, this is a very special and important week for people who follow Jesus. And what happened to Jesus can make us feel a lot of feelings. Those feelings are okay. In fact, sometimes it's really important to feel those feelings. And so getting quieter can help us do something called reflecting, which means thinking about what happened and how it makes us feel. 
So in order to reflect better, I'm going to sit back and get a little more comfortable. And I want to encourage you to do the same thing. So find a seat, get comfy, and make sure that your ears are working to do some good listening. Okay, here we go. Ah, I'm just going to put my feet up here, okay? So last Sunday was Palm Sunday. It was the day when Jesus rode into Jerusalem on a donkey and the people in the town cheered and welcomed him, singing Hosanna, which means save us. It sounded like a big party, but they were crying out to be saved. Is there ever a time when you felt like you needed to be saved? Maybe like you went a little too deep in a pool when you didn't know how to swim? Or maybe you got lost for a couple minutes in a grocery store? Or maybe you got sick and you really didn't like the feeling and you wanted it to be all better. Do you remember wanting to throw a party when you wanted to be saved? I, I don't think so. Hold on a second, guys. Do you guys smell something? No, no, it's just me. Okay, fine. Back to the story. So, the people celebrating Jesus were doing it because they wanted him to save them, and they thought he would. They had big ideas that this man riding on a donkey would bring them more power, more safety, and more freedom than they had. They wanted to fix the world that they lived in, and they wanted someone to get rid of the people who made their lives hard. They got it right. Jesus was going to save them. But they got it all wrong about how he would save them. Man, uh, I can think of a few things I'd like to be saved from. I want to be saved from doing the dishes again. Because while my family's all home, there are a lot of dirty dishes. And I really want to be saved from this smell that I keep on smelling. Are you sure you don't smell that? It's really, really stinky. What could be causing it? No? Oh, wait. Maybe I'm the one causing the stink. Maybe it's my stinky feet. Hmm. Oh, yep. It's definitely stinky. Well, I think I'll put these away right now. <sighs> Why don't you guys check your feet? How do they smell? And now look at the very bottom of them. Most of us have been inside our house for a long time. And I don't know what you wear on your feet when you're inside. I like to wear my slippers with no socks. My kids usually run around with bare feet. And by the time they've run around all day in the house with bare feet, um, the bottoms of their feet start to look a little dirty. Maybe your feet look dirty, or maybe they're as clean as a whistle. But I bet we couldn't get our feet as dirty as the people in Jesus' day got their feet every single day. They didn't have big, fluffy slippers like I am wearing. They didn't have nice sneakers or winter boots. Do you know what they wore around their feet all day? Sandals. Now, I do like to wear sandals in the summer when it's nice and hot outside. But when I wear sandals outside for too long, do you know what happens? My feet start to look dirty because there's nothing separating them from the outside dirt and my clean feet. I've had to wash my feet some nights before I go to bed because of how dirty they get. But even then, my feet would not be even half as dirty as the people who walked around in Jesus' time. You see, as they were walking on these dirt roads, it wasn't just people walking on them. It was also animals. And do you know what animals do no matter where they are? Something that people don't do everywhere? <coughs> Ew! Yuck! Now imagine that all over your feet because you're walking with sandals and that is all over the road. Double ew, double yuck. Are any of your feet that dirty today? I didn't think so. Our feet definitely aren't that dirty, but I bet instead of our feet, there is something on our body that we've been asked to wash a lot lately, right? 
Before my kids left school for March break, their teachers talked to them a lot about washing their hands and how to do it really well. Maybe your teachers did too. And if you're watching any of the TV these days and the news, you might see doctors talking to our whole country about how important it is to wash our hands really well. Our hands don't stink, but they could be carrying a lot of invisible things like germs or even... So that's why you're asked to wash your hands so much, especially after you go to the bathroom or before you eat. In Jesus' time, they washed before they ate too, but they washed their dirty, stinky feet. And by they, I mean it was a servant's job. It wasn't their job. Would you want that job to wash people's dirty, stinky feet before they ate? I wouldn't. Would you want your best friend to have that job? Yeah, I don't think so. So imagine Jesus' friend's surprise when Jesus took a towel and kneeled down to wash their dirty, stinky feet. Some of Jesus' friends let him do this, but not all. There was one guy in particular who did not even want Jesus close to his feet. Jesus is a really special dude. I get it. I'm going to keep my dirtiness to myself, thank you very much. But do you remember back when Jesus entered Jerusalem on the donkey and the people waved palm branches and yelled, save us! They wanted saving from the things around them that made them upset. But Jesus was coming to save their hearts and all the dirty, scary, sad things that we as people feel and do that we sometimes don't want other people to see. Here, why don't you watch this story with me? Stories of the Bible, The Last Supper. This is Jesus, hey who is the Son of God and the Savior of the world. While Jesus was on earth, he taught everyone about God's love and healed people from their sickness. He did many miracles like calming storms and even raised people from the dead. At this time, the Jewish people were celebrating a festival called Passover that had been celebrated since the time of Moses, when God brought his people out of Egypt. So Jesus was going to Jerusalem to celebrate. The disciples asked Jesus where he wanted to eat the Passover meal that night. Jesus said, as you go into the city, a man carrying a pitcher of water will meet you. Hello. Follow him. At the house he enters, say to the owner, uh, hi. The teacher asks, where is the guest room where I can eat the Passover meal with my disciples? He will take you upstairs to a large room that is already set up. That is where you should prepare our meal. The disciples found everything to be just as Jesus had said. Jesus and his disciples gathered for one final meal together. Jesus got up from the table, took off his robe, and began to wash his disciples' feet. Jesus loved his disciples, and he knew the time was coming for him to leave them and return to heaven. When Jesus came to Peter, he said, Whoa, 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 wait! Are you going to wash my feet? Jesus said, you don't understand what I'm doing now, but someday you will. No! Peter said, you will never wash my feet. But Jesus then told him that unless he washed his feet, he would not belong to him. Oh, well then, okay! Then Peter said, then wash my hands and head as well, not just my feet. But Jesus told him that was not necessary. He just needed to wash his feet for Peter to become clean. So Jesus finished washing their feet and said that the disciples should do to others as he had done for them. 
He told them to follow the example that he had set for them to serve each other and not think of themselves as greater than any other. Then God would bless them for doing as Jesus had taught them to do. As they were eating, Jesus took some bread and blessed it. He said, Take it, for this is my body, which is given for you. Jesus told them to do this to help remember him. Then he took a cup of wine and gave thanks to God for it. And he said to his disciples, This is my blood. It is poured out as a sacrifice to forgive the sins of many. Jesus said, One of you eating with me here will betray me. He told them that things were supposed to happen this way, but that great sadness would await the one who betrays him. The disciples were very upset and asked, Am I the one? Who is he talking about? Judas asked Jesus, Am I the one? And Jesus said, you have said it. One of the disciples asked Jesus, Lord, who is it? Jesus said it was the one who he would give the bread to. He gave the bread to Judas, and Jesus said, Hurry and do what you're going to do. None of the others at the table knew what Jesus meant, so Judas left at once to betray Jesus. Then Jesus comforted and encouraged the disciples. He promised them that they would have a helper come when Jesus was gone. They all sang a song to God together. In Jesus' day, they washed their feet when they ate because their feet was the dirtiest and germiest part of their body, and nobody wanted that close to their food. They washed it so that when they ate, they would stay safe. Today, right now, we're not just washing our hands a lot. We're also staying away from other people to keep the world around us safe. So if this all happened today, maybe Jesus wouldn't be washing our feet. Maybe he'd come and hold our hands and wash them but he would do it to help us notice the things in our lives that only he can clean. He would do it because when we ask him to save us from what is happening around us, he knows that what we really need to be cleaned from is the stuff we do that makes the world hurt. That's called sin. We need to be cleaned of the times we're unkind or unloving and when we hurt others. We need to be cleaned of how we always want to be first or have the most. Those things, like the germs on our hands, are invisible. But the minute they get out, they really start hurting the world around us and making our world feel broken. But the difference between the that got on the feet of Jesus' friends and the germs that can get on our hands is that the stuff inside of us is things that only Jesus can fix. That's why this supper that he had with his friends matters to us today. That's why it matters that at that supper, he told his friends that his body had to break like the bread they were breaking and that his blood had to be poured out like the wine was being poured out that night. And that's why later that night, Jesus was arrested. And that's why it still matters to us today, during this Easter week and during every day that follows for the rest of our lives. Jesus fixes the world around us that we want to be saved from by cleaning our hearts and our lives first. We all need that. I'm going to ask you some questions that you can talk about with your families. I'm going to give you a whole minute, but you can also come back to these questions later and talk about them. What are some ways that you've been stinking at home together lately? Think about the things that you personally have done that's stinky and not the things your family has done to you.
Okay, here comes the next question. How can we be like Jesus and do something we don't necessarily want to do to help our family and make our time together a little less stinky? Remember, in all of this, Jesus loves you. He's not scared or upset to get close to the dirty, stinky, germy things. We're not allowed to leave our homes or have people come see us, but Jesus is here with you exactly where you are right now. And that night after supper, Jesus went with his friends to a quiet garden to pray. Jesus asked his friends to stay with him and pray too, but they were so tired and they didn't know what was going to happen next. So they fell asleep. So maybe today we can be friends of Jesus and pray with him. Let's pray. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear Jesus, thank you for the way you want to be near us the way you want to tenderly clean the stinky parts of us. When the world around us feels hard and broken, help us to ask you to save our hearts. We love you. Thank you for loving us with your whole life. Amen. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We're going to worship Jesus right now because no matter how stinky we act or how broken the world around us feels, Jesus loves us and he gets close to the stinky parts so that we never have to feel alone. He is asking you to go on a journey with him and when you do, it's going to change your life. And our songs today aren't going to have actions because we're being a little extra reflective today. So you get to move your body however you want to worship God. If it makes more sense for you to just sit and think about the words that are being sung, that's okay too. Let's sing. Search high and low, you'll find the same thing 
great and they really helped me think about what Jesus did for me and how it has changed my life. 
Now I have one more suggestion for something that your family can do tonight. At 7 p.m. Atlantic time, that's actually the next time the clock hits the hour, that's when it is, so it's soon. Uh, there is going to be a Holy Thursday Mass that's going to be live streamed by the Basilica in Halifax. If you watch it as a family, try to see if you recognize anything that we talked about today. Also, tomorrow at noon, we're going to be back here doing this all again together, talking about why Jesus had to do what he did for us on Easter. I'm really looking forward to seeing you again. Thanks for spending some of this really special Thursday with me. Jesus loves you and I love you. See you tomorrow.